Hi, my name is Lars Mechtefessel. I'm together with Nan Wang, chairing today's session at the Vesco Discovery Meeting on Translational Science. We are joined today by Professor Stephen Quaik from Stanford University, who will talk about uh, his findings on genomic markers in cardiovascular disease. Um, yeah, Stephen, thanks again for joining us, uh, not only for the session, but also for this uh, great uh, interview here. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about today's talk and the topic of your talk. Sure, I'd be happy to, and thanks again for inviting me to the meeting. Um, I'm going to talk today about work done by myself and a number of collaborators at Stanford to develop simple blood tests that replace invasive biopsies for organ transplant recipients, including heart transplant recipients. Um, as you know, uh, after one receives a new heart, uh, uh, over the next couple of years, there's biopsies taken of that new heart every couple of months to measure and try to detect rejection, and that's very painful for the, uh, for the patients. It's expensive and has other limitations. And over the last uh, several years at Stanford, a group of us have developed a blood test that uses a phenomenon called cell-free DNA uh, that is now starting to replace biopsies. Well, wow. can you tell us a little bit about the potential implications of this technology? Sure. Uh, well, for one thing, uh, it makes uh, transplantation safer and <laughs> more comfortable for the patients, and it gives the doctors more information uh, because biopsies are sampling only a portion of the organ, whereas cell-free DNA is effectively sampling uh, the entire tissue, and it gives you uh, a better overall view of what's happening to the graft. One uh, main topic uh, of the meeting this year is personalized medicine. Uh, in cardiovascular disease, but uh, we know that you've been working not only in cardiovascular, but also in uh, cancer and uh, neurology. Um, and uh, for me, it would be very interesting being more of a, a narrow-minded cardiovascular researcher. What's your, what's your take on, first of all, personalized medicine and also the different diseases you look at and maybe similarities uh, you kind of see um, if you compare these diseases to each other? Sure. Well, clearly personalized medicine is a new frontier being explored uh, in the clinical community. Uh, the work I'm going to talk about today actually it has a bit of that flavor in it because the way the method works is to uh, measure DNA that's directly from the donor, from the cells in the heart that was donated, uh, and measuring the polymorphisms that are unique to the donor. Um, and so uh, normally in your body you've got one genome. When you get a transplanted organ, there's now two genomes. And by measuring the proportion of polymorphisms that are not from you but are from your donor, uh, that provides a, a pretty powerful measure of the health of the transplanted organ. Um, that's just one example of many things people are doing. Uh, you know, it's uh, 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 sort of looking at the genetic inheritance uh, is a way to help prescribe drugs better, figure out who should be uh, receiving certain drugs, who's going to respond, who won't. And that sort of personalized genetic medicine is, uh, is, a, is, is a very exciting frontier area that I'm sure is being explored at the meeting as well. You know, coupled to precision medicine is machine learning. Um, how do you think machine learning will be important for your uh, for the transplant patients? That's a good question. It's not something I've personally worked on. Um, certainly in the emerging scientific literature now, anything that involves imaging, uh, the machines seem to be pretty good at recognizing patterns, although personally I still feel more comfortable with a human being looking at my, <laughs> my records. Fascinating thing, I think, about uh, about you, uh, and uh, apart from your work at Stanford, is um, you, you being involved in the Chan uh, Zuckerberg Biohub. Can you maybe, for some of the speakers who or audience who might not be from the Bay Area, tell us a little bit about this initiative and uh, where do you think uh, this is heading? Sure. The Biohub is a new nonprofit medical research organization based here in San Francisco, uh, funded by philanthropy from Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan. Uh, that uh, is part of their, uh, the, the Chan Zuckerberg philanthropic mission of trying to cure, manage, or treat all human disease in their children's lifetime. Uh, and we work very closely with the three universities in the Bay Area, Stanford, UCSF, and Berkeley, uh, and have an excellent partnership with them, uh, mostly focused on uh, the very first part of the process, that is basic science, discovery, and technology invention. Um, and uh, that's where we're putting all of our resources. Uh, we're funding more than 50 groups at the three universities and doing quite a bit of research at our institute uh, um, for the purposes of, of this group. Probably the, the, one of the stronger connections is through our, our Cell Atlas project, which is an attempt to kind of rethink the foundations of cell biology uh, through the application of new technologies like single cell genomics. 
uh, and to try to get a deeper understanding of all the cell types of the human body. Are you able to tell us um, how much is known of the cardiovascular system from the cell atlas or any information you can share? Well, we're still just mm -hmm. sort of sifting through the first set of data. It's pretty interesting and we're discovering uh, not only some new cell types but also how uh, certain cell types will share common features in their program. Uh, what's the transcriptional regulatory program that's common and separate across cell types? Uh, what do the immune infiltrates do and how are they, what features do they share across tissues? And uh, 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 I think we'll see a lot of discoveries along those lines in the next year or so. Yeah, maybe one um, technology you already commented on is single cell uh, sequencing. So how do you how do you see that not only being implemented uh, in basic research, but maybe also in, uh, in, in patient healthcare and, and clinical settings? Yeah, well, these single cell sequencing approaches are extremely, an extremely powerful way to understand heterogeneity in tissues. Um, and so if you've got multiple cell types or something like a tumor with a number of different cell types, being able to sift through all that um, one cell at a time is just a very powerful way to, every single cell is a pure population essentially, uh, and helps you understand the cellular hierarchy and the structure of what's there. Uh, on the very basic science side, we've been involved in using it to try to understand cell types within tumors and what might be the therapeutic targets one could attack, uh, to measure the clonal structure of tumors and how that changes in time. Uh, and on the basic science side, just to understand the developmental hierarchy of the tissues, um, which I think will pay dividends down the road in regenerative medicine and other such applications. Well, going back to a little bit on your talk, um, besides transplant application, where else do you think um, this uh, cell-free DNA would be important for cardiovascular disease? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, we've seen applications uh, in prenatal health uh, and uh, perhaps around congenital issues there. Uh, you could detect them early on. Uh, we've seen other applications in uh, infectious disease, so in cases where there are infections deep in the body and you might not want to be able to go biopsy, it's not practical. Um, uh, I'm sure you have a word for that in cardiology, mm -hmm. endocarditis or something. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Um, and uh, cell-free RNA is proving to be another way to measure tissue health um, more broadly um, and to understand when uh, uh, cells are being stressed or, or ill. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us in this interview. We really appreciate this talk. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here.